And I would first like to acknowledge that we are in the traditional territory of the Escort First Nation. And i first like to also recognize some special people with us today, even though Jackie have recognized them. And I would like to first welcome members of the Escort and Cash Creek Rotary Club and the Escort Lions Club. Please give them a big hand because they are the ones that make today happen. <laughs> and members of the Escort First Nation, and I know that the uh, Leeton First Nation uh, uh, brothers are here as well. I just say hi to them. And the Escroft Mayor, Jet Jays, and members of the Che family, descendant of Escroft. And I really like to make a special mention of the co chair of our Legacy, Advisor, Legacy Initiative Advisory Council, the LIA, Mr. David Choi. Mr. David Choi, can you come over? Please come over. I want you to be recognized. David has been making a lot of contribution to my legacy in the initial project since day one, when the community was set up. And I'm so impressed with him that he took upon himself, using his business time, using all his staff, to work on today's tour, that we can see the more than 10 veterans that are here, Chinese veterans, that are here with us celebrating, and also some of our LIAP members and also community uh, representatives, as well as the media people who come and record what's happening today. Chris David, thank you, David, for such a great job. Please give him a big hand. And I haven't mentioned the fact that he also organized a, a tour to Victoria on March the 7th when I introduced Bill Free, the discriminatory provision of the Chinese historic, uh, not Chinese, historical wrong, repeal act, that for the first time, all the discriminatory languages against not only Chinese Canadian, but Japanese Canadian and other Asiatics were no longer in existence. They were repealed, period. That happened yesterday after we got the royal assent. And I'm sure all the visible minority will no longer feel that they are second-class citizens in this great country of ours. And I also have to mention the members of the Legacy Initiative Advisory Council. Several of them are here. Can you raise your hand so that you can be recognized? Thank you. Thank you for all the input on all the great work. I'm so pleased to be here once again at this historic Chinese cemetery. During my last visit, as I mentioned to you earlier, in June 2016, I was so privileged to help unveil the most beautiful locally crafted glass mosaic of a Chinese dragon that you can all see at the back there, as well as a striking memorial bench is over the other side. There's a lady was uh, sitting there that contains a glass mosaic of the, a koi fish. And today, I'm again privileged to once again stand in this place of peace and tranquility. This time, to remember those who are no longer with us and to ensure their legacy remains for generations to come. I'm, of course, referring to the many Chinese Canadians who lived and worked in the Escrow area during the construction of the Canadian Pacific Railway in the late 1800s. As I mentioned earlier, Following the completion of the railway, many Chinese Canadians lent their talents for irrigation to the local agriculture and ranching industries. This includes Charles Choi's grandfather, Yuk Sam Chao. I don't know why your grandfather is uh, surnamed Chao. Is it on your mother's side or your father's side? Or they use the first name as a last name. I have to talk to the Choi brothers to try and find out why a different surname. So, uh, you know, Chinese, we, we use our surname first. So I guess uh, for the Canadians, when they see our name, because we've put our surname, the first character, so they use our first name as our surname. There's, there's a lot of confusion there. So sadly, Charles Choi's grandfather, Yuk Sam Chao, was permanently separated from his family when he left China to move to Canada to work on the railway. Chao's mom never saw her dad again and Charles and his brothers never met their grandfather. All they knew was that he later worked as a farmer 
and lived and died in Ashcroft. It's bittersweet that the Trey family was finally able to track down Yok Sam Chow's final resting place, right here in this historic Ashcroft Chinese Cemetery. Story like this one are why we are here today, to honor the memories of Yok Sam Chow and other Chinese people who sacrificed so much in the search for a better life in Canada. I'm told that without Chinese Canadian contribution to the development of Ashcroft, the history of this community would be very different today. This Ashcroft Cemetery is a special place and a fitting site for this event to mark the contribution and the sacrifices of Chinese Canadians. Not only was the cemetery nominated as one of the 77 places of historic significance to Chinese Canadians in British Columbia, it has been lovingly restored by members of the local Votary and Lions Club. Once sweet infested and forgotten, today the cemetery stands as a place of contemplation and remembrance. This commemorative monument, like so many others being announced across the province, represents a sad time for British Columbia and for Ashcroft. A time when Chinese Canadians struggled to maintain their dignity in the face of racist government, government policies and government regulations. However, this monument also signifies the important role BC's Chinese community has played in shaping British Columbia into what it is today, a province that embraces people of all cultures and backgrounds and values their contributions to our welcoming and inclusive society. I would like to thank the Rotary Club of Ashcroft and Cash Creek and Ashcroft Lions Club members for your tireless work and dedication to this project that has made today's event possible. In December 2013 and January 2014, Chinese Canadians attended community forums in Kamloops and Kelowna, where government heard from those who were directly and indirectly impacted by the historical discriminatory legislation. The meetings were among several consultations held with Chinese Canadian communities across the province. Later in 2014, Premier Christy Clark apologized to BC's Chinese Canadian community on behalf of the entire Legislative Assembly for historical wrongs committed by previous governments. Following the apology, the province released a Chinese historical wrongs consultation report that outlined recommendations for several Chinese legacy projects, such as the creation of regional markers to commemorate the positive contributions of Chinese Canadians to BC's history, culture, and prosperity. Recommendations were received during extensive community consultation, including the forums held in Kamloops and Kelowna. This beautiful monument will serve as a permanent tribute to Ashcroft Chinese Canadian pioneers and commemorate their hard work, their dedication to community and family, and their significant contributions to the building of Ashcroft and the development of British Columbia. Thank you. And now I would like to invite Karma Kerbenus, Vivian Edwards, members of the Legacy Initial Advisory Council, and Charles Cho and his family to help me unveil Ashcroft's commemorative monument. <laughs> 